Of late, we have come across a number of instances of wild elephants, tigers, and wild boars straying into residential areas bordering the forests of Kerala in places like Wayanad, Palakkad, and Iduki. Do you know the reason for this? The forest department has now come to the conclusion that the lack of food and insufficient forest area are the reasons for wild animals, including tigers and elephants, turning up at residential areas and sometimes posing risk to the lives of humans and domesticated animals. Grassy plants such as reeds and bamboo have been greatly reduced as invasive plants like Senna siamia are seen widespread in the forest. This has reduced food for herbivores like elephants. This is the reason why they come out of the forest. Since there are edible crops in the forest border areas, they had leave the forest to consume these. As the animals that tigers feed on roam in search of food, the tigers will also leave forest to go after them. Now, before proceeding further, let's see what invasive plants are. Plants that do not occur naturally in the region, but proliferate in the area they have been introduced into and cause several negative impacts, such as affecting native biodiversity, causing economic losses and harming human health in these new habitats are called invasive plants. However, not all introduced plants are invasive. Many alien plants cannot establish in new envi environments, and some uh, that do establish are not harmful, unlike invasives. Earlier crops such as ginger, turmeric, and tamarind were raised on the forest borders. The animals used to return without eating them. Now bananas, yam, and, and tapioca are cultivated. Wild elephants and wild boars that come to eat these do not return. A tiger needs 25 square kilometers of habitat. This will decrease as the number increases. Tigers attack and maim one another as they encroach on one another's habitat. Some of them uh, lose their canine teeth like this. With that, the ability to catch prey is lost. Thus, once they see cows and goats on the forest border, they do not return to the forest. As of the 2018 census, there are more than 130 tigers in Wayanad Wildlife Sanctuary alone. Now it is estimated to be 150. There are 790 tigers in Anaimali Tiger Reserve, a part of Tamil Nadu, and 568 tigers in Karnataka's Bhantipur Tiger Reserve. Tigers can travel up to 200 miles across state forest boundaries to hunt prey. In the case of elephants, it is estimated that there are 5,706 wild elephants in Kerala. Wild elephant herds require 128 square kilometers of habitat. The challenge has been that most of the elephant habitats have been demolished to make way for resort, resorts and settlements. Meanwhile, Forest Minister A.K. Shashindran has said wildlife has increased beyond the forest's carrying capacity. A plan has been launched to eradicate invasive plants such as yellow mulberry in the forest. However, he said in the assembly that tigers that pose threat to humans will be captured and uh, uh, rehabilitated in Parambikulam and Periyar tiger reserves. The radio collaring technique will, with a chip attached to the body will be used to track the location of captured tigers. The census to count the number of tigers and wild elephants will soon begin, the minister said. The minister added that a scientific study will be carried out to put an end to attacks by wild animals. In response to the adjournment motion notice introduced by Congress, Sunny Joseph, the minister said that 637 people have died in wild animal attacks in five years. The goal is to end the human wildlife conflict once and for all. The government will take further action on the basis of scientific studies. Current study reports contain only interim measures, he said. The minister claimed that since giving the panchayat presidents the authority to shoot the wild boars that were running, uh, that were ruining the crops, more than 2,000 wild boars have been killed. But 
is it not better to end the human-wildlife conflict in a bloodless way?